Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com. Yes, I have a pink ball of wool here. I don't know why I've got a pink ball of wool here, but I've also got, in terms of pinkness, I've got four pink wines here. Uh, I don't know, can you see them there? Well, various shades of pink. Uh, so I've arranged them in colour order. Is that a sensible way to do a wine tasting? Well, we'll soon find out. Um, actually, the first three aren't all that uh, uh, different in colour. They're, they're on that uh, pale and hopefully interesting side, whereas the, the final one is a sort of colour that rosé used to be. And, uh, uh, and, uh, but since the popularity of Prov Pro Provence, um, then there's a lot of these pale ones. So let's dig in with the pale one. Private Beach 2017 Rosé, Vin de France. This is one private beach where everyone is welcome. Let's see whether it lives up to that billing. Maybe it should be called Private Peach because there's something uh, slightly peachy in there, a little bit of raspberry. Doesn't smell amazingly concentrated, but um, fair enough. It's okay. Um, it's one of those that is, there, there is, it, it's, it's come out of a, um, came out of a uh, cool cellar about two hours ago and it's warmed up to uh, room temperature and at room temperature, um, uh, it's, it, it's showing, it, it's sort of a bit meh, uh, there's a little bit of nutty sulphur character there, um, yes, if it, maybe if it was chilled a bit more I would be slightly more enthusiastic about it. It's okay, but um, it's not uh, uh, going to challenge the scorers in a major way. Let's see whether Chateau Terrebon from the Côte de Provence, 2017, actually they're all 2017, um, whether that's uh, an improvement. This seems fresher and, um, yes, it, it's, it's higher in alcohol. I think the first one was the 11.5%. Uh, and this one's 13. Uh, but it feels crisp, it, well, it seems as if it's going to be um, crisper and, uh, yeah, a bit more um, entertaining wine. Yeah, um, l again, a little bit of peach and raspberry. Um, better texture here. Um, it feels fuller body, but with that crisper, um, uh, crisper backbone of acidity holding it all together and um, making it quite a, yeah, quite a nice, satisfying drink. We'll have a nice satisfying another drink. So still in France uh, but not in Provence so in the longer dock now with uh, Chateau Saint Eulalie uh, Minervois Printemps de Eulalie. Um, 35 Syrah, 30 Sanso, 25 Mourvedre, 10 Grenache. Does that add, add up to 100? Hopefully. If it doesn't filter it. It smells as though it's going to be a little bit more um, deeper and basier than the uh, the Provence. Uh, it's this is the highest alcohol of these four, fourteen percent. Uh, so not a uh, not a light. Um, well, it's a sort of wine that you can probably sit there and uh, think, oh, I'll have another glass and another glass. Slightly dangerous in that respect, but it smells um, more. Um, yeah, it's it feels a little almost as if there's going to be a little bit more. Uh, intensity, a little bit more of a mineral spike as well. Still probably going to be on the fresh side, but um, yeah, it feels like there's a bit more going on here. Yeah, extra depth, extra layers. Uh, there's a juiciness about it, but then there is this mineral crispness that's um, really quite satisfying. Um, Flavour-wise, um, yes, there's the fruit, but there is this earthy um, yeah, life beyond fruit character that, that's there that makes me want to uh, drink this more than anything that's come before. So, uh, oh, I've got a bit too much in my glass to pour away. I did spit it out. I've got work to do later this afternoon. Maybe end of the day I'll have a, a glass of that. Unless uh, Le Rale, uh, or Le Rale, Le Rale, because we're, um, we're in Italy here, uh, Rosato Basilicata um, Alovini. Made from Aglianico and Montepulciano grapes. An up-to-date version of the traditional Southern Rosé style. Let's see whether it is. Yeah, along with that deeper colour, uh, almost strawberry cordial type of uh, colour. Uh, this is the um, richest and f uh, spiciest, fruitiest of the one. It's the one where the, f the fruit character really comes through. They've done that extra bit of, um, uh, of time on the skins and it's extracted more fruit flavour. Uh, does that make it better or just different? Let's have a see. Yeah, more 
more dark fruit characters there. There's, this, there's the, the red berries, a little bit of black currant in there as well. Um, it's quite a different style from and a different set of ambition from, I think, the first three. Um, I, I was asking, I, I, know, I know there's some people who go into a restaurant and say, I would like your palest rosé. And you think, well, if that, you want your palest rosé, why don't you have a white wine? Uh, they think pale is, uh, uh, is better. But uh, here, uh, this is a really, this is almost like winter rosé. If, if the, if the other's a summer rosé. This is the sort of thing that I want to have uh, um, with my... Um, Christmas dinner, I think that would be lovely with, with Christmas dinner. It's got that depth and uh, fleshy fruit uh, that would make it go well with, uh, with, with, with stuff like turkey, with trimmings. Um, and um, maybe I'll save my uh, eulalie for um, beachside bouillabaisse. Uh, but uh, those, are, those are my pick of, the, of these four. Uh, but they are quite different wines, but you probably can tell from the colour that uh, you would expect them to be quite different. Which do I prefer? Ooh. Uh, come back in a couple of days and I'll, I'll tell you, but uh, I think they're both pretty good. Oh, I forgot to say goodbye, didn't I? Well, I'll see you soon and uh, I will report back on... No, I might not report back, but um, you'll be able to see from all the notes which I prefer. But I think these two are running neck and neck, but very different beasts. See you soon.